which is all that matters, is never in the box. What does that mean? Every time I come to one of these cases from you know, the different places I go across the country, I'm handing a banker's box or two or three. And in there is all the typical things, depots, pleadings, you know what's in there. And like I say, the story is never in the box. And so I remember sitting down with Al and I said, Al, tell me the story. And he'd say, well, it's like you heard garden variety, car wreck, surgical. I'm like, man, those are facts. Those are what I call a narrative. Narrative is not a story. Tell me the story. And then he'd go again and again. And after a while, I thought he was going to actually take one of these swords off the wall. And here he has and run it through me because, like, I kept asking the same questions. Like, I just told it to you 15 times. What are you, an idiot? Al, what makes up a good story? What are the elements? He says, well, you got to have a hero. I said, yes. He says, well, you got to have a villain. I said, yeah. And he says, and you've got to have, you know, something that they do and how it goes. And I said, well, that's essentially right. I said, did you notice that you gave me all those facts? But where is the story of the hero, the villain, and the, what I call the struggle? The struggle is very, very key important with story. And that's where we started getting the work. And of course, Al's, uh, you know, comes on right away and he starts and then he starts able to piece it all together and it starts to come alive. But then we had to go and spend a lot of time in the field. I was asked just uh, last night, uh, uh, where's your office? Where, you know, where would you like it to be? And I said, well, I, my office is out of the back of my car. I spend most of my time at the location of either where it happened or where the people went to get their physical treatment medical treatment or or i should say and their home their work you have to go to all of the environments because all of the real facts you need to be able to tell the story in a way that comes to life that you connect with and participate in is not in a depot it's not in a pleading it's out there in a tree or a traffic light or a pavement or an armchair or a piece of medical equipment that's abandoned in their house. And you have to then ask and do and participate in reenactments so you can see, hear, feel, well, listen to what it all sounds like. And then you have to be able to understand which pieces from those sensory inputs you can communicate and how you will do that in a trial. That's the story. I do absolutely believe there's no one way to do a trial. I have found through the years in teaching thousands of students that oftentimes they have tried many cases, but they've really only tried one case the same way over and over and over. Okay, that's fine. That's predictable. I, I like to be able to have something uh, that they can you know, rely on, but it kills creativity. And most importantly, you are making a bunch of suits to put on the rack so that you can mass produce them. Everything we make is one of a kind. So the only thing that I do in every single case is to make sure I figure out how to make this case one of a kind or this story one of a kind, because it's the only person like this ever. And I don't look for the similarities in all the other types of cases. We heard Al called a garden variety auto case. It is. But if we went with that, we're screwed because I couldn't even show the pictures in opening. I could, but there was nothing about them that you could connect with except for the feeling that this is another one of those cases. Look at those. There's no, there's hardly any damage. You got a racing stripe down the side of her minivan. It's not caved in and it's not cracked and you know turned and it's not shattered it's a racing stripe and you look at the defense you know vehicle and there's no damage at all i put that visual up there in opening what do you think predictable feeling is going to be that the listener takes from that so what we decided to do instead was go to where we thought they were weak had no experience and could not in any way recover from and that was comparison Nowadays, people 
have triggers for when they see somebody who they think is playing upon emotion. And a lot of lawyers, especially ones who've just been, uh, you know, in the college and they're trying to incorporate those techniques, it takes a long time. <laughs> They'll think that all they have to do is just get up and be emotional. And I'm telling you, that is as bad, but the opposite of being, you know, a beaker-like thing that's reading a, you know, a, a written out statement and, you know, putting a, a garbage can on your head. I mean, the polar opposites, but my point is that equally ineffective. So what I do is I make sure that I start with being what I call the energy of a teacher, not a dictator. There are some teachers who are tyrannical and dictatorship-like and just tell you what to think and shut up because they're smarter than you and we hated those professors. But if you want to start molding and shaping yourself into a trial lawyer that changes people's perceptions, Think about when it was in your life that somebody did that for you. More than likely, you'll find someone who was successful. And if you ask them, was there a teacher you had at some point who changed everything about how you looked at this, that, or even your own life? And almost always you get, you know what? Yeah, there was. Tell me the story. Well, after spending some time trying to figure that out, I finally figured out a really good teacher is someone who shows you, doesn't tell you, is fair and shows you both sides so that you can decide what feels right to you and has no energy committed to you agreeing with them. Do what you want with the information. Once I tweaked that and got that record, I used to be a teacher, I was teaching uh, at the University of Organic Chemistry and all that, I found that the way the hard science is normally Taught is in a very arrogant way because sometimes the people who mastered it are uncommonly uh, intelligent and they have a lot of judgment for people who can't stay up. That wasn't my job. My job was to inspire, to create, to motivate, and to give people the gift of information. So that's my attitude about it now is I absolutely believe that the only one true gift you can give anybody is information because with it you can change your perception your direction your dedication everything you believe in if someone gives that to you and so now when i'm doing the opening it's i ask myself and al and i went through this over and over and over diagrammed it all out of the office what would you need to know in order to understand why that fact is important in other words each we list all the facts but then each fact becomes its own piece of paper because it has to be a story.